This is the Cardiff Business School podcast, where we explore the power of public value in everything that we do. My name is Peter Wells, and I'm the Pro Dean of Public Value and also the host of the podcast series. My guest today is Helen Tilley. Welcome. Thank you. Helen is a researcher at the Wales Centre for Public Policy. The Wales Centre for Public Policy does a wide range of policy orientated research and policy advice primarily but not entirely only for the Welsh Government. The work covers many different aspects which are crucially important within our public value mission, including environmental issues, social issues and economic issues. Today we're going to focus on the work that Helen does within the broader remit, the Wales Centre for Public Policy. Helen, welcome. Thank you, it's a real pleasure to be here. Yes, uh, as I say, the Wales Centre for Public Policy has many different aspects. Broadly speaking, how would you describe the work of the centre? Our USP, if you like, is to get evidence and provide it to policymakers, a range of policymakers, as you mentioned, Welsh government, but also public services in Wales and and others beyond that as well, and synthesise evidence and provide it to them to inform their policymaking process, to allow them to be as well-informed as they possibly can be to devise the policies that they're making. Okay, so very much on the data gathering, the provision of evidence, and presumably analysis and reports and and, and similar uh, outputs. That's right. We use um, a range of different processes to do it. So we we often synthesise a lot of secondary evidence that's already out there. We convene people, so we run a lot of events and roundtables, from small informal discussions to larger events where Mm -hmm. we bring external people in. Mm -hmm. And provide policy briefing, notes, um, evidence synthesis, and yeah. What brought you into this area? What's your history? How did you get here? A bit of a meandering route, to be honest. (laughs) I worked in international development for about 20 years. Um, Tanzania was my second home um, about 20 23 or so years ago. And um, I got into that through my my master's degree. My background is economics, uh-huh. actually. And then I moved into economic development, uh-huh. um, got the travel bug a little bit and had the, the privilege of living and working in Tanzania. And then sort of in main, well, East Africa quite a lot, mm-hmm. um, West Africa, Asia, sort of quite a lot of countries, which was a fantastic experience. And then I became interested in the policy process. So I was working with um, primarily with ministries of finance on budget reform, for Mm -hmm. instance, and public Mm -hmm. financial management. Mm -hmm. And I was really interested about how the information informs the policy decisions that are made. And then I returned to the UK, did my PhD you say, oh, I returned to the UK and did my PhD just like that. And that's a big decision. It was. And I had, I think I had a lot of burning questions that I wanted okay. to explore. So that was a, a luxury and a real opportunity uh-huh. to be able to do that. And uh, Where were you studying? Was it here in Cardiff? Uh, no, it was at the School of Oriental and African Studies in oh, London. Oh, in London. Oh, yeah. How nice. Um, yeah. I did half a case study on Tanzania and uh-huh. then um, a literature review and analysis mm-hmm. as well. And that took me to the Overseas Development Institute in London, where I um, carried on working and mm-hmm. overseas and doing quite a lot of travel and looked increasingly at knowledge to policy, right. knowledge mobilisation. Right. And then I eventually realised that, well, I know quite a lot about how policy is formed overseas and particularly in Tanzania, but I didn't really know very much about what was happening in the UK uh-huh. and where I was living, at the, yes. of course. <laughs> Ironically enough, um, yes. Yeah, and I felt that I really should be better mm-hmm. informed. Um, so I had a, a growing um, urge to scratch an itch to understand what was going on where I was based mm-hmm. in the UK. And um, then I stumbled across the Wales Centre for Public Policy and was fortunate enough to to get a job there, which and that moved me to Cardiff, actually. Right. So yeah. I was based oh, Well, I could see that, that we were also fortunate to get you, given uh, all, all the experience you've had in this area. And so, you know, you, you've got that broad remit, kind of economically informed, evidence-based, public policy advice. But I get the sense that that's not quite what you're doing now. <laughs> no, it shifted a little bit. And that's because of the, the growing net zero agenda, uh, okay. which has become increasingly important. So um, and now our priority area, the priority area that I lead in the centre is the environment and net zero 
work stream. Okay. Um, previously, that was the economy, decarbonisation and skills. So you can see how uh, it's slightly yeah, shifted. It's migrated a bit. Yes, yes, yes. it has. Well, the, of course, the, the political emphasis changes over time and, and hence uh, the, the kind of evidence they're looking for and, and the, the, the kind of policy focus will shift with it. So you're engaged in this area of net zero. It's, it's relatively new in the policy landscape in a sense. It's only recently that we've, we've really sort of started to nail down some targets. Uh, what are the major challenges? There are plenty of them. Um, there are lots of opportunities as well, which mm -hmm. I think I'm sure we'll get to. But um, on the challenges, I think the challenges is the scale of change overall, right. the massive scale of change that's needed, which overall it's, it's unprecedented. Of course, we haven't been in this situation before sure. and radical shifts in society from the individual to the corporate, um, the meso macro level is needed to see things in a very different way. And it's a shift in values. Mm -hmm. It's a shift in the way economy economy works. And yes, indeed. And, and, and it's an inter interesting one because I think the, the personal values are also a key to this, as you say, individual values. You've come in on your bicycle. Yes. <laughs> well done. Do you try to incorporate the, 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 the things that you're dealing with in, in your professional life? Do you try to incorporate that, therefore, in your day-to-day yeah, I, I do, actually. And I've always been a cyclist, and this is my prop. Beautiful uh, bicycle helmet in, in rather garish yellowy green. It's certainly um, high-vis, yeah. But I've, I have always, always cycled. Um, and linking back to my international experience, in the late 90s, I was working in China. And one thing that really struck me there is the role of the bicycle. Of course. And bicycles just were hugely significant in cities in Beijing, Chengdu and, and all over the place. And of course, as China has developed, the use of cars have, has um, exponentially increased and bicycles have been squeezed out. I mean, I haven't been to China for, for decades. Yes, well, when I was the last there, and, and by that time, yes, the cars had been, been quite successful. I was in Beijing okay, and I was struck by the way, I wish I'd brought a can of oil because the bicycles were so poorly maintained. Oh, right. uh, the, the chains were all loose and dangling on the ground and rusty and dry. My heart wept for those chains. Um, but you're right. I mean, the, the, it is a, a key concern. And uh, here in Wales, you know, obviously we're trying to push the cycling agenda as well, but it's been very difficult to get traction on that. But do you see, when you're looking at net zero and, and we, you know, we see the big challenges you've mentioned, do you see that, that there are possibly opportunities as well uh, to, to make progress on this? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the opportunities come from a different way of of operating. For instance, different, and there's a lot, one of the challenges is the challenges in agriculture and farming mm -hmm. and rural communities, but that's also an opportunity. So there needs to be a different shift to a different type of support for farmers, of course, and also different ways to sustain rural communities, but also linking to transport. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a, a critically important area being one of the, sort of, I think, the third highest emitter. And there's huge opportunities for change there. So yeah, when, when we're looking at the opportunities for change, I mean, one of the things that strikes me is the how to find that balance between the, the macro kind of policy advice at the areas that you're involved with and, and the role of the individual. And it, it, it's impossible, you must have you must have experienced this, it's impossible to live a net zero life on your own. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I think with, with transport, what's, what's critical is integrated long-term planning. So there's a need to really join up mm -hmm. um, Rural and urban, make communities connected, support um, active travel. And that's not for everyone, of course, mm -hmm. but more sustainable forms of travel, shift mm -hmm. to electric vehicles. So there's change at the individual level, but also systemic right. change linked to, of course, the motor industry as well, yes. and electrification and yes. making that affordable and functional. And I think a key part of the challenge is ensuring that the skills are available, the right skills are available at the right time, people are trained. Mm -hmm. So getting the workforce links, when I say links, I mean, it sort of flows through the system yeah. from right from the young educational age up through lifelong learning, which we've done a report on as well, through into... Um, the workforce. Yeah, so it becomes a very um, multifaceted agenda. When you start down that net zero route, therefore, um, you must you must need a, a diversity of skills to help you 
inform in, on policy. Is that something that you're doing within the Wales Centre for Public Policy? Do you bring together teams of people to do this? We do. We convene a lot of um, academic experts, for mm-hmm. instance, who come and talk to us about their areas of expertise because we're not, I mean, because we cover, as you mentioned, a really broad area. We're yes. not experts in all of those areas. So uh, it's um, impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> I'd love to be, but it's impossible. Yeah. Right. Life isn't long enough. <laughs> no, but it's interesting, though, because I, I, I think uh, when we're un- talking about the public value kind of cha- grand challenges, this is also the case that uh, it, it's almost impossible for a single discipline or a single area of, of expertise to really address the complexity and, and the interrelatedness of, of those problems. Do you see that that, that this is likely to uh, be an increasingly prevalent feature of your, your own work and the work of the centre, that you bring together more and more people? I think it is. I think it's, it's really important in building the networks and connections as well to be able to, to bring people together and bring their expertise in. I mean, we can only know so much as you mentioned, my background's economics, so mm. I'm not I'm not an environmental expert by mm. any means. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we're a fantastic team of people at the centre. I'm biased, of course, but <laughs> but we absolutely are. I mean, well, you've been really um, successful for a good many years now. And actually, that leads me to my second prop. Um, ah, yes. the, uh, ten year anniversary. Ten year anniversary. So Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, which we celebrated at the end of last year. Right. Um, so it's been it's been going strong for a yeah. long time, and I. Yeah, it obviously speaks to a need uh, in that sense. But I wondered uh, whether, I mean, I've done a fair bit of policy advice work myself. And to be honest, I found it quite frustrating, <laughs> especially working um, on projects for the European Commission, people like that. It's very hard to see progress being made at a pace at which you think progress should be made. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, you know, how, how, do you, how do you reconcile that? You know, how do you try to push a process of change and and what happens when you when the policy makers and the political kind of positioning of those policy makers shifts mm. and i think there are key opening and opportunities and the windows of opportunity mm. to influence change but we're not we try and hit upon those but i think there's a, i've certainly recognized that we might sometimes be ahead of the curve mm. a bit um mm. and so we can get the evidence out there, but it won't necessarily be picked up until right. the time is right and there is a window of opportunity. Yeah. Our work on just transitions um, was an example of this. We did some work where we noticed that there was an evidence gap. We did the research and then a bit later it was of interest. Oh, that and is then interesting. the Welsh Government picked up so on it. So and- you don't just sit there waiting for policy makers <laughs> to, to come along and say, oh, give us some advice, but you're actually carefully kind of inserting insights to drive some of that policy making that's our stream of work which we call the public services work okay. where we're um, developing networks and connections and talking to people all the time to find out where their scope to yeah. what what their evidence needs are so yeah, even yeah. if it might be that there isn't a direct apparent evidence need and um, we might get an inkling of something so we'd pick that up do some research then ah, take it to people so, okay. and then it snowballs from there yes, and yes. we did another piece actually on skills for a just transition mm-hmm. which was a couple of years ago now and that then informed um, our work for net zero skills which informed the Welsh government's right. net zero skills action plan yes, so yes, there is a, yes. a trajectory and it flows quite nicely. That's really interesting. Um, And it's certainly something I hadn't thought about before, you know, that there's an important role in in guiding in advance, shall we say, policy makers Mm. to to, to consider key issues. Final point, I think, what's next for Helen? Well, I'm thinking very much in terms of our environment and net zero work stream at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, We've been doing some really interesting work for the Net Zero 2035 challenge group. We've been supporting their thinking and around the evidence that they're providing as part of the cooperation agreements. This is the um, wonderful group of um, experts Mm -hmm. who are chaired by Jane Davidson. Oh, yes, I know Jane, yes. And the the work's um, being wrapped up this autumn. And so we've been supporting that, which has kept us very busy over the last 18 months. And so then now I'm thinking about the next, what the next phase of our work is. So I'm in this process where we're starting to speak to people, find out where we want to, what we want to be doing, what we want to be supporting next. Right, and we've got right. a very um, interesting piece of work. We're supporting the Welsh Local Government Association. Mm-hmm 
to um, think about where they can prioritise their work on net zero and also the financing challenges around that because yes. financing, of course, with yeah. this huge agenda yeah, is a, yeah. key a key issue. So it might be that we, we pick up that and develop that work a bit further. But we're very much in the what we call the scoping phase where we're out talking to people, thinking about what we can do and yeah, what yeah. we can take forwards. Yeah, I can see you're, you're full of ideas, aren't you? <laughs> well, but it's actually really reassuring and been a pleasure to have you along today. And I've learned a lot in a very short amount of time. So I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. It's been a real pleasure to be here. This has been the Cardiff Business School podcast, where we explored the value of public value in the work done by the Wales Centre for Public Policy. We've been talking to Helen Tilley and her work, particularly around the net zero agenda, but as she has explained, it spills over into so many other aspects of life because tackling these grand challenges is a multifaceted, multidisciplined task involving many different actors across society. And Helen is right in there in the middle trying to make it happen. Thank you very much. <laughs>